Hi, we are with Chris Delisle, and he is going to introduce himself. Okay, <laughs> so my name is Christopher Delisle. Um, I'm the Bruin Hills Residence Director here at Belmont University. Um, I'm originally from a small town in Indiana called Sunman, which is about 45 minutes west of Cincinnati, Ohio, out in the middle of the cornfields where nobody knows where anything is. So definitely a, a country boy at heart, kind of raised on uh, traditional country values and uh, just kind of where I come from, from my background. So. What school did you go to? I actually went right here to Belmont. Um, I was here for four and a half years as a student. Um, started out as a guitar major, music performance, and my sophomore year they started the songwriting program, which is kind of a new program for Belmont, and I switched over into that and actually graduated back in December from that and got the job here as a residence director after being an RA for three years. Sweet. So, can you tell us one word that best describes you and why? One word that best describes me, um, I would say genuine. Um, for better or for worse, I try to be the exact same person in any situation that I'm in, whether it's um, on the job, whether it's at church, if it's with my friends, my family, whoever I am um, around one of those people is who I try to be around all of those people. Cool. So, we all want to know, what are your pet peeves? <laughs> my pet peeves? Probably my biggest pet peeve would be people not taking details seriously. Mm -hmm. um, there's certainly a time and a place for kind of a relaxed approach to things and, and more of a lackadaisical uh, view on something. Um, but I have a, a viewpoint that um, when you are doing something, you should do it to the best of your abilities, whatever it is you happen to be doing. Um, and even if you're doing something for enjoyment purposes, you know, I've, I personally find a lot of enjoyment out of doing it to the absolute best ability that I have. Um, and it, it kind of gets under my skin a little bit when I'm working with people on whatever it is, whether it's fun, work-related, anything, and there's a small detail that should be pretty easy to fix. It just kind of takes a little bit of extra effort on the person's mm -hmm. part. Um, and a person will take the attitude of, well, you know, I mean, it's just that little thing. It doesn't really matter. Um, specifically, a good example of that would be grammar issues that I've noticed, like when you find official <laughs> documentation from, you know, uh, when I was in high school and I was getting, you know, information from universities that um, had gotten my address from, from different things and I was looking at going to school, I remember getting a pamphlet of information from a university that was trying to get me to come there that actually had grammar errors in it and it it's a small thing if there's one letter off or if it's uh, the, the improper form of a verb or something. But to me, it's, it's those little details that really show that you can follow all the way through and you can complete something in an extremely professional manner and that the, the little things, if you don't let the little things slip up, then you are so much more trustworthy in the way that you're not going to let something big slide by. Um, and I think if you let the details go, you blur the line of what is too much to let go without it actually being a problem. You know, you give an inch, someone takes a mile, mm -hmm. that kind of an idea. So the, the more details you let slide by, the easier it is to let things slide by and details become bigger and bigger until all of a sudden you're starting to let actual assignments slide or you're not putting your full effort into something. And I think that just reflects badly on your character, um, especially if I'm working with you. It's mm -hmm. also reflecting bad on my character because no one knows who had what part of it. You know, we're supposed to be a team working on something. Um, and so the, the, the details are really important to me and, and people that don't understand that and specifically people that push back against that, that's, that's a huge pet peeve of mine. Gotcha. So what's your favorite thing to do and why? My favorite thing to do is a really hard question. Um, mm. I am a pretty adventurous person. Um, I like trying really random things just because I've never <laughs> done them before. Um, I love learning new things that I've never that I've never done. Um, as a result of that, I have a lot of unusual things that I do, um, mm -hmm. from 
everything that goes into a clown act, like unicycling, balloon tying, um, <laughs> juggling, and street magic, things like that, to um, you know, playing different instruments and um, songwriting. Um, I like fishing. I like hunting. Um, I like doing spray paint art, where mm -hmm. I actually do like landscape style art pieces um, with just spray cans of spray paint, like you find at Walmart in the in the home section that kind of thing. So there's, there's a lot of really different things that I like to do. Um, if I absolutely had to narrow it down to one, it would probably be, it would probably be songwriting. Um, you know, that's, that's what my degree is in and, and that's um, kind of the, the thing that I feel like I'm probably most accomplished at out of, out of all the things that I do. So, so if I had to pick one, I would say that one. Okay. So, What's something you really want the RAs to know about yourself? Something that I really want the RAs to know... Um, I think something that's extremely important for RAs to know about me as an RD is that I am always here. Um, I am happy to help with anything that anybody has help with um, or needs help with. By, by nature, I tend to quickly and very deeply care about the people around me, um, and 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 I, I hope that that is returned when I do. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of times I'm perhaps maybe a little misunderstood because of that, because um, I tend to be a lot faster at being able to open up with people and care um, than sometimes people are used to, and that sometimes I think is occasionally taken the wrong way as in uh, perhaps someone thinks it's a little um, it's a little put on it's a little fake it's something that I'm I'm forcing myself to do to to offer mm -hmm. to you know spend time with someone or help them with something but it really genuinely is something that's very important to me um, you know especially in, in a situation like being an RA working for residence life um, I was an RA for three years myself and I know some of the most respected relationships that I had with people were with the RDs that I worked for. Um, I worked for three different RDs in those three years that I was an RA. And each one of them was definitely a very different experience for me. Um, but each one was a, a really good experience for me as well. And I really want to be able to pass that on to the other RAs as well. Um, you know, and whether it's something, a, a professional issue that has to do with the job, um, or even if it's a personal issue. I'm, I mean, I'm glad to, at any point in time, sit down and have a meaningful conversation with somebody, give them advice if I have any to give, or even if it's just, you know, someone to sit down and commiserate with. I, I love to, you know, just get to know people on that deeper level and really connect with the people around me. Awesome. Now you just mentioned advice, so are there any words of advice that you'd like to give to all the RAs? I would say the biggest piece of advice that I can give as a, as a former RA to the upcoming RAs, um, sometimes in the job there are things that require a little more sacrifice than we would like, whether it be time or putting effort into something that we don't see the outcome or the purpose for, um, something along those lines. And my, my advice would be, you know, trust the people you're working for, that they have your best interest as well as the best interest of the students at heart. Um, sometimes even as RDs, we don't fully understand the, the reasoning behind why we have to do certain things the way we do because we're growing and we're learning as professionals just as much as the RAs are. Um, and as you go farther and farther along, you, you learn more of that and you start to see the reasoning behind things. And so even when things seem a little bit against our natural inclinations or seems a little out of character for what we say we want to do, in the end you realize that the, the steps that we take and the things that we do, they really do have an ultimate goal in mind and that we're, we're hoping to achieve that you know, kind of one student at a time and, and just, just have a positive effect on somebody's life. Um, and as an RA, that's, that's, I mean, that's the best part of the job is the positive effect you get to have on the people around you.